So let's talk about the types of jobs that you can get if you only had your A plus certification. What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the jobs that you could possibly qualify for if all you had was just your A plus certification and nothing else. The reason why I'm doing this video is because a lot of you guys ask me all the time, what types of jobs can I get with just the A plus certification? Well, I'm going to go through this list of potential jobs that you might qualify for if all you got was your A plus certification. But I do want to make this crystal clear. Clear. So before I get into this list, you need to understand that these jobs that I'm going to present to you will more than likely not get you to the coveted six figure and beyond mark. These are mostly just entry level jobs to get you into the industry so that you can start building up your experience and fatten up that resume so you can toss it back out there in the future so that hopefully you can qualify for a job that pays more money. Right now, the focus with these particular jobs, along with getting the A plus certification, is just to get you into the industry because this is what Tech G personally believes to be is the easiest path to getting into IT. All right. So just understand that. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll never make the six figures and beyond because you can very well do that. But with just the A plus certification and nothing else, you're probably going to cap out at a certain income rate, which I will be displaying on these slideshows and I'm about to go over with you all. So I just want to make that really clear so that we don't have any misconceptions because y'all been looking at all these weird advertisements on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook of people making these ridiculous claims in IT. I'm not the one that makes ridiculous claims. I just tell you how it is and how it's more than likely going to be for those of you who have little to no experience working in IT. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see all the types of jobs that you might qualify for if all you ever got was your A plus certification and nothing else. All right, y'all. So here is a list of the top CompTIA A plus job titles that CompTIA actually says you may qualify for if all you ever had was just your A plus certification. So during this presentation, I'm going to be presenting to you the salary range you can expect, the average salary pay that you'll probably be making, the job description, and a list of activities that you might find yourself doing when you go to clock in for work. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So the first job that you might qualify for is the IT support specialist and they got a salary range of about 52 to 64 thousand dollars you might find yourself eventually making around 57 thousand dollars and you're gonna be out there troubleshooting computer issues and helping users with technical challenges that they might experience. And when it's time for you to go clock in, these are some of the things that you're going to find yourself doing. Troubleshooting issues and concerns, replying to requests for IT services, repairs, supports, and other complaints, referring user messages and calls to the appropriate IT personnel that can deal with issues that you're not qualified to fix. You're going to be using computer tracking systems to manage trouble tickets, making recommendations to improve computer systems, providing documentation for customer support and resolution upgrading and managing systems, implementing new business and productivity software. You'll be training people how to use this software and systems. And you're going to be maintaining and doing some backups of security databases. Next job you might qualify for is a field service technician, and they got a range of about forty-four to fifty-two thousand dollars. You might find yourself making around forty-seven thousand. You're going to be out there performing computer network repairs, software troubleshooting, and other related tasks. And you might even have to go visit these people at their locations and assist them in IT service installation repairs and other general support. And while you're out there living your best life as a field service tech, you're going to be troubleshooting, testing, repairing, and servicing technical equipment, providing service and customer support, managing on-site installations and repairs, maintenance and testing, diagnosing a bunch of stuff and determining the proper solutions, producing detailed reports, documenting all that stuff, reporting that stuff back to other technical teams, comprehending customer requirements and making appropriate recommendations to fix their stuff. But most importantly, you're going to be out there building positive 
positive relationships with the customers because ultimately you don't want to get fired and you want to keep them IT checks pouring in. So that's what you're going to be doing as a field service technician. Next, we have what is called a desktop support specialist. So we're looking at about 41 to 54,000. You'll probably be making around 47,000. And you're going to oversee and maintain some computer hardware and software systems, resolve technical issues, support your customer software integrations by diagnosing and troubleshooting common problems. Your daily task consists of you diagnosing and resolving technical issues with hardware and software, consulting over the phone in person or through the online chat to figure out what's going on with these technical issues, determining the needs and providing system reconfigurations, accessing user needs and recommending technical solutions like patches, updates, or enhancements. You're going to be documenting a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to be responding to queries and providing info on proper installation and maintenance of technical systems and completing thorough installations on the client environment by taking backups of data, upgrading their systems as needed, and installing new software or hardware solutions. Next, we have the associate network engineer. So you're looking at about 54 to 84,000. You're probably around the $67,000 a year mark. You're going to be assisting in analyzing, planning, implementing, maintaining, troubleshooting, and enhancing systems and networks consisting of a combination of mainframes, mini computers, LANs, WANs, physical and logical components that integrate these systems together as an enterprise networking backbone. And while you're out there being the world's greatest associate network engineer, you're going to be out there assisting with establishing networking environments by installing, configuring, testing, and documenting equipment network systems to the design and specifications, assisting with networking tasks to ensure reliability, availability, and serviceability, providing technical support, responding to work orders, assisting with configuring firewall security settings, assisting with network technology upgrades, and assisting with producing documentation for the installation, network topology, and troubleshooting of communications hardware or software. All right, next we got the system support technician. So we're looking at about 47 to 63, 64,000. You'll probably be making around 54,000 after it's all said and done. So you're going to be managing, maintaining, and repairing IT systems, diagnosing and repairing faults, resolving network issues, and installing and configuring hardware and software. Some of the things you'll find yourself doing day to day is performing analytical, technical, and administrative work in the planning and installation of new and existing personal devices and workstations, diagnosing and fixing problems, conferring with end users to determine the types of hardware and software they need. Then you're going to go out there and install that hardware and software and maintain the existing components. Then you're going to go train them users to use their own equipment and software. Then you're going to perform some general maintenance tasks, troubleshoot and resolve some issues, prepare some reports, do some evaluations, and make some recommendations on evaluated products. Next, we have the junior sys admin or the junior system administrator. So they're about sixty-two to seventy-seven thousand. You're probably be clocking in about sixty-nine thousand when it's all said and done. And you're going to be out there assisting other system administrators in setting up and maintaining computer systems and ensuring digital networks and databases run smoothly. And if you want to keep that $69,000 a year paycheck coming in, you're going to be out there administering disaster recovery plans to ensure that data is backed up and can be recovered. You're going to be monitoring network performance to ensure that there are no bottlenecks or errors that could impact productivity. You're going to be installing operating systems, testing for errors and backing them up, maintaining computer equipment by replacing or upgrading components as needed, installing patches to fix security vulnerabilities, Figuring new systems based on specifications from clients or other IT professionals, installing and maintaining computer networks, troubleshooting problems and fixing them, and monitoring server performance and capacity to ensure that it meets the client's needs. Next, we have the service desk analysts, and they come in at around thirty-six to forty-four thousand dollars. You'll probably be clocking in about forty thousand, and you're going to be providing technical help for users of an organization, responding to inquiries, evaluating and resolving issues related to IT equipment and its applications, and providing technical care for any aspect of the information systems, such as the hardware, the operating systems, applications, and network. 
networks. Some of the things you'll be doing, providing daily network status reports to the operations team, creating monthly metrics and reporting of service desk tickets, providing direction of IT support issues, and keeping appropriate staff informed of issues or concerns, receiving and managing and helping to resolve online chat and phone initiated technical issues and inquiries, escalating issues to the appropriate teams as necessary, troubleshooting independently and resolving certain levels of IT support issues, developing SOPs to promote consistency, receiving, prioritizing, and documenting and actively resolving end user requests and incidents, and analyzing IT incidents and service requests to identify trends. Next job you might qualify for is the technical support specialist. So they have a very wide range, as you can see, from 30,000 to 76,000. You'll probably find yourself at around 48,000. And you're going to solve technical difficulties the customers face with their products or services, maintain, manage, and repair some IT issues, resolve network problems, install and configure hardware and software as well. Also, when you clock in, you're going to be installing and configuring computer systems and apps within the company responding to customer issues and assisting in troubleshooting and fixing their problems, actively updating, maintaining, and monitoring all aspects of the network, resolving technical issues related to network issues, attending meetings with the clients to help them fix their problems, maintaining a working log that details all required system updates, organizing and filing documentation pertaining to warranties and instruction guides for the computer hardware, and assisting management in creating training materials pertaining to computer troubleshooting and usage. Next job you might find yourself doing is a data support technician. They have another wide range of about 25 to 68,000. You'll probably find yourself right around 41,000. You're going to be collecting and organizing and processing information for the company, managing inbound, outbound emails and other paperwork, inputting data into storage systems, writing and proofreading documents, and analyzing data for specific reports and making suggestions on how to improve data storage. Some of the other activities you'll be doing is providing service and assistance to end users, dealing with ticketing solutions, interacting with teams to deliver and process data in response to inquiries, maintaining databases and spreadsheets, helping in the process of troubleshooting systems and workstations, supporting IT and data analyst teams and company-wide projects, processing and recording tickets using a computer and designated tracking software system, performing remote troubleshooting shooting through analytical practices and identifying and accelerating priority issues per business requirements. Next job we have is the end user computing technician. So we're 38 to 49,000. It'll be around 43,000 a year. And you're going to provide on site technical support for end user hardware and peripherals, software, audio visual display systems, and wireless technologies. So basically, when you clock in, you're going to be out there installing printers, scanners, cables, NICs, and wired switches. You'll be out there troubleshooting hardware and software, resolving basic and advanced hardware and software issues, leading technical activities by teaching people new technologies, deploying and administering IT systems in assigned regions, managing desktop images, upgrades, security patches, configuring and testing a bunch of stuff, provisioning, configuring, and deep provisioning user computing devices per service requests in accordance with their service level agreements. Next, we have the good old help desk technician. So they're looking at about 36 to 58,000. You'll probably be around 43,000. And you're going to provide technical support for clients and all of their issues. You're oftentimes the first point of contact for customers. So you're going to be responding to these customers by phone, remotely, or in person to provide that technical assistance. And while you're out there being the greatest help desk technician, you're going to be managing tickets in a timely manner, responding to these customers' issues, providing them assistance, documenting your interactions with the customers, performing diagnostics to resolve their issues, escalating issues to the next tier if you aren't qualified to solve it, installing, making changes and repairs to the computer hardware and software. And most importantly, you're going to be doing follow-ups with the customers to ensure that their problems are fixed and 
they're happy little customers so that you can keep your job. All right. And our last job that you might qualify for if all you had was your A plus certification is a system support specialist. And they come in at around $51,52 to $64,000. You might be making around $55,000. You're going to be assisting end users on system issues, implementing network strategies to boost the system's efficiency and optimal performance, creating resolution reports and making recommendations to prevent system defects and inconsistencies and handling network installs and upgrades. And some of the things you're going to be doing is going to consist of you managing internal installs or applications on relevant versions in order to test and do quality assurance on new patch releases, configuring VoIP systems, managing large scale PC deployments, creating network, email, dial up, VPN and system security access accounts, performing installations, operating system deployments, maintaining an up to date record of necessary tasks to resolve tickets and providing support, whether it's local or remote, for users regarding operating systems, software, and hardware issues. All right, folks. So that was my video where we talked about all of these wonderful CompTIA A plus job titles that you could potentially qualify for if all you had was your A plus certification and nothing else. So we went through this entire list on your screen right here, and I'm not going to go through and read all those job titles again, but I do want to reiterate one more thing. So like I stated at the beginning of this video, a lot of you all are fascinated with the possibility of making 100 thousand plus dollars a year working in IT. And it is extremely realistic that you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year in IT. But we also have to be very real about how we get to that hundred thousand dollars. So if you have zero experience working in IT, you honestly cannot expect to come in and get a job making a hundred thousand dollars. That's not to say that it's not possible. And there are some other disciplines in IT where that may be a reality. But for those of y'all who choose to go the route that I teach, A plus Net plus security plus, and then that kind of funnels you off into cybersecurity, cloud security type stuff, networking, and some other lanes in tech. You normally have to build yourself up. And the way that I teach, in my personal opinion, and yes, I am biased, is that this is the easiest way to get into tech by getting these jobs because these jobs are forever advertising, looking for people. And oftentimes, all you really need is the A plus certification to apply for these jobs. And I know some of y'all look at these job descriptions, they'll say something like, you need one to two years of experience. Experience. That's not necessarily true. They normally just put those things on the job descriptions to kind of scare people away. But if you go through a training program, like the stuff that I offer on my channel, you can get the necessary experience to apply for a lot of those jobs by just going through the training program. So that is one way you can bypass the so-called work experience. And then once you get your foot in the door with these entry-level jobs, you guys got to remember the most important reason why you're there is to get the work experience because you guys didn't didn't have the experience prior to applying for the job. So in order for you to get into the door, you got to come to the door with the certification and then you get the experience and then you take all that experience that you've been doing in that job. You've been working there for six months, 12 months, up to two years. Take all that experience. Now you got a wealth of information you can add to your resume so you can put your resume back out there. And now you start qualifying for other jobs of higher positions that oftentimes come with more money to get you closer to the illustrious and covered it six figures and beyond. So I hope this video was informational to you all, as I'm pretty sure it was, because I took my time to go out here and research all this stuff for you because Tech G cares about the people. But if you got something good out of this, go ahead and hit that like button, share button, drop a comment, tell your mom and your daddy to go subscribe to a channel membership so you all can learn and go out there and successfully pass the A plus network plus or security plus. Or for those of you who are interested in attending my A plus boot camp, that will be starting in a few weeks. I will post the link to that in the description or in the first comment so you can book your free consultation so we can get you A-plus certified relatively quickly so you can go out there and start applying for those jobs, getting the money, getting the experience, then being on your way to making six figures. And with that being said, I will highlight you all on the next video. So peace.